Since the beginning of my winter break, I have been spending time in my hometown, Xiuheng, or Zhaoqing in Mandarin. It's about a four-hour train ride away from Hong Kong, and two-hour ride away from Guangzhou or Guangzhou or Canton, where my parents and I live. It has a modest population by Chinese standards, and it's quite spacious and comfortable once you get out of downtown. I was born and raised here until I was about halfway through pre-K. I never went to school here, but this is the place I always come back to during the holidays. This has been the way of life for many, many years, and so up to this day, I'm still affected by the deeply implanted idea that leaving Guangzhou for Xiuheng is equivalent to holidays, and the reverse means school. Therefore, I still suffer from pre-semester depression every time I leave Xiuheng, even if my holiday is not yet over. But anyway. I ended up walking around town with my grandma and filming the streets and people. She took me to a store that sells fishing gears. She knew the store owners and their cat, a giant cat, and I ended up using about a quarter of the memory to film this cat. But I also filmed a good deal of the street that I never managed to visit in the past. It surprises me that there are still so many unexplored places in my birthplace, which is the one place on earth I thought I knew the most about. Not just this. What struck me more is the fact that I may never be able to set my foot on many unvisited places in town, because they have long been gone. As I filmed, I realized that some of the places I walked past may forever disappear in my lifetime, and many other places will disappear without ever being documented, be it on film or in text. This is the tragedy of rapid urbanization. Places are gone before they're remembered. And this reminds me of the words from a mentor, who is far wiser than I, and who has explored a great deal of this world. He said that being family-oriented will eventually get you somewhere. So I feel obligated to do something, at least to secure my childhood memories in the camera. The past few years have been very adventurous for me, and recently I have been going through some personal struggles. It was not until I came back to my birthplace that I finally found some peace. I am a descendant of a family-oriented people. For thousands of years, poems have been written and songs have been sung, all expressing desire to return home. The idea of going home is so prominent that it alone is enough to trigger the annual national migration before the Lunar New Year. Interestingly, at the same time, many of us are brought up with the opposite idea: leave home. When you think about it, it does make a lot of sense. Because where do you have all these people who want to go home so bad if they did not leave home in the first place? If you are born in the country, you should make a living in town. If you are born in the town, you should attend a school in a big city. If you are born in the city and had everything you wanted, you should probably leave the country and settle down abroad. Somehow, your birthplace becomes your last choice. I'm pretty sure most people in this country are receiving education. Or pursuing a career outside of their birthplace, you only stay when you can't make it. But if you want to be considered successful, your story has to happen elsewhere. The further away, the better. Just never home. And I too was raised with the idea that I should have a life far away from home, as far away as possible. My father would tell me, and so away from home I went. I have been extremely privileged. To be able to travel to so many places at such a young age, I know it could not have been any better. True, I still have other places on my list, and I still want to see more of the world. But the idea that I must have a life outside of my hometown haunts me every second. On November twenty third, two thousand and twelve, my grandpa passed away. I was the only one in my family who couldn't attend his funeral, because I was half a planet away in Toronto, Canada. I can still remember the moment when I received my mother's text, as tears rolled down my cheeks. I can remember the gray, gray winter skies above me, as I walked on the quiet cement streets of a foreign land. I know it was not my fault that I couldn't stay by his bedside when he died, but I still cannot help but feel guilty. And what frightens me more is that I know this would happen again if I decided to go far, far away. Somehow. I will make my name by the amount of time I did not spend in my home country. 
by the time I did not spend with my family because I had some greater purpose in life. But to me, I will forever be the one person whom grandfather missed when he died. To me, I will always be the missing one in the funeral, and I'm not proud of that. I can't be. I can understand why any Chinese parent would want their kids to live elsewhere, although the reasons are complicated. Political, economic, environmental, social, educational. There are so many of them you could easily pick one up simply by being alive. I know my nation is flawed, and I know anyone has the right to live wherever they want. But what about the future of my birthplace? Many people who left this country had good reasons to do so. Hell, I can name a dozen reasons right now on why I would like to live in a place like Vancouver, even if it's kind of boring. Yet I cannot help but think about China, the place that bred my body and soul. It is convenient to believe that someone, a mysterious, competent individual, will emerge from an undisclosed place and put the nation back on the right track. And my participation is unimportant. I should just go to a much better place and not come back until things get better. But who will make things better? I know my parents are conflicted too, because telling your child, who you carefully raised and educated for twenty-two years, to fly away to some faraway land where everything is better for her does appear to be the right thing to do. I know they wished China had been a better place. They feel sad that they are left with no other choice but to send me away, and I too. Feel sad, not for myself, but for the millions who left because they had no other choice. We Chinese have never been very good at fitting in foreign culture. We built Chinatowns everywhere we went. We insist on speaking our native language regardless of where we settle. We hold on to the Chinese way of life because we didn't leave our country longing for a different way of life. We just didn't have any other choice. And so we ended up building our own China in another country. Wherever there are Chinese, there is China. But there are many ways to connect to your nation: politically, economically, or like myself, culturally. The idea that I must dissever myself from my homeland kills me. It really does. I know it may not seem obvious, but I am as Chinese as you want me to be. I grew up bathing in Chinese poetry, history, and classic novels. The people I admire are either Chinese who have been dead for a very long time, or are created by a Chinese who has been dead for a very long time. I still believe that the best thing that has ever happened to me is being born a Chinese, and thus am able to understand the essence of Chinese culture. I just don't think I can be any luckier. My mother language is Chinese, and my mother tongue is Cantonese. There is nothing better than that. I don't know if I will ever have children, but I know very clearly that I don't want them to go through the pain that I am in every waking moment. I don't want to raise them in one place and then tell them to have a new life elsewhere. I also don't want my children to not be able to speak fluent Chinese. I want them to be able to read *Journey to the West* in its original, and that reason alone is enough to make me dread having a family. In a place that does not speak Chinese, what we have come to as a nation, when the soundest advice from a parent is to tell a child to have a life outside of their birthplace, outside of their home country, it sucks. It really sucks. It's sad that there are people in this world who would tell you that you should be less proud of your origin, or that you should somehow feel ashamed of your heritage. Many have been denied their well-deserved pride as people. And many others have been punished for their traditions and beliefs. I don't know why it is so hard for people to just be nice to each other. Maybe it's because people are stupid. I admit, every time someone even dares to suggest that being born a Chinese somehow makes me an inferior being, I will want to break their neck and beat them up violently without mercy. But of course, I wouldn't do that because no opinion can justify hatred or violence. Confucius valued forgiveness. He said that we should never force what we do not desire onto others. I do not want others to go through the pain I went through, and therefore I don't say those things to other people. It's simple as that.
I also don't have all the solutions for the many problems my nation is now facing. But I am sure nobody will solve this for us. I also know that starting anew somewhere else won't help much either. I still have so much to learn about my culture, and it bugs me that so many people don't know shit about my culture. Hell, many Chinese don't really understand Chinese culture. I mean, I'm no expert, but I know enough to be frightened by the degree of ignorance around me. It feels really good to be culturally connected with so many brilliant minds of the past. Hasty modernization has eroded the form of my culture. Many aspects of my heritage are being reinterpreted as a cheap version of a Western idea. But I think we're pretty good the way we are. We don't have to copy someone else to look good. On the contrary. There are many things other people should learn from Chinese culture. It matters not how fast you can thrust a nation into the future; it matters how much you value a nation's past. But people don't really get it because they never open their hearts to learn. And so I grasp every chance to speak my mother tongue, the Siouxing dialect, which is largely the same with the so-called standard Cantonese, but with some differences. I need to remember how it is spoken. And I should not feel ashamed just because it has a rural origin. I know someone needs to be consciously doing this because otherwise some stories will be buried forever without being told. I don't want the story of my family go untold. My grandmother tells me new stories every day we spend together. Those who judge the lives of my people don't see the marks history has given us. They don't see the fact that. All my grandparents have survived the Japanese invasions. My grandfather, the one who's gone now, knew only one Japanese word, tobacco. My grandmother said she could never forgive the Japanese, because they destroyed her family. And they all survived the Great Leap and the Cultural Revolution. They are witnesses to a ridiculous era, and they remember the feelings of being betrayed. My parents were born right into the Cultural Revolution. And they saw the golden eighties, when hopes were high and freedom did seem to be within reach, until everything changed in the late eighties. They have been frightened, and they still are. So I want to stay close. I don't care about greater purposes of self fulfillment. There is no greater purpose than loving and being loved by family. My grandparents are more than happy to have me stop by for lunch. Yet even they are fed with the idea that I will end up in the U.S. or U.K. It just doesn't make much sense to me now. Should I feel bad for not wanting to be far from my family? I still want to see the world. I'm still curious, but I know just too clearly that no matter where I go, I will always want to come back here. My heart lies here, and my soul lies here, and I want to rest here when I die, because there is no place like home. And to anyone who thinks any less of this place, fuck you. This place gave you me. I rest my case.